A summing integrator on the left side, this guy, versus a difference integrator on the right side is shown. We want to analyze why the output, as shown in this formula, uh, is the integration of the linear combination of the n input independent voltages v1, v2, v3, up to vn, with some gain p, g1, g2, up to gn. And why on the right side, the circuit is just integration of some amplified version of the difference of the two voltages at the input using just one ideal outcome for each of them. So in this cases, let's just uh, do the analysis quickly. Assume op-amp is properly biased. So assume that uh, you have the right supply voltage so that the op-amp is operating in linear region and is ideal. And uh, you can see it's in negative feedback. So therefore, the virtual short is valid for this op-amp. So V positive equal to V negative equal to obviously because V positive is grounded, AC grounded, so we have zero there, or just grounded. So the voltage here is zero. And uh, in this case, because we have N voltages, we're going to just make the assumption that just V1 is active and uh, the rest of them are zeroed. So uh, because of that, you can see that the two voltage across R2 and the rest of the resistor is zero, so no current flows through the resistors. The only resistor that is actively passing a current is R1, that the current I1 is passing through it. Uh, and then this current goes and nothing goes through the op amp because op amp, ideal op amp has infinite input impedance. So this current literally goes and passes through IC. Effectively, R1 and C1, in this case C1 here, R1 and C1 are in series in this scenario, or R1 and C, let's say, because we only have one cap. So let's just uh, write a simple uh, Let's say KCL here, the current coming into this node is equal to the current going out. So what I'm going to write is the current through R1 is equal to the current through C, assuming that V1 is the only active voltage. Uh, so if that is the case, then, so let me just write it here so that it's clear. I said, um, assuming, assuming V1 is only active, is only active is the only active voltage then we get that kcl indicate that i of r1 should be equal to i of c1 great now what i can do is i can just substitute for these guys and say i of r1 is simply v1 because uh, you can see that the voltage across r1 is v1 because this voltage at uh, the negative input terminal is zero so v1 over R1, that's the current, is equal to I of C1 by definition is C1, uh, we don't need C1 as I said because it's only one cap. So let's say I of C is just simply C uh, D D C D T. Okay, a simple reshuffling and then take the integration from both sides gives us this that voltage of cap as a function of time is 1 over R1C times integral V input V1T DT. Okay, we found it uh, because we know that look at the polarity of the voltage across the cap plus minus and look at the polarity of the voltage across the, let's say, output uh, voltage, which is plus minus. So obviously the polarity of a cap is the reverse of polarity of output, so V out is uh, minus VC. So when we found that VC is this, therefore we can conclude that V out is just negation of this. So I'm going to write it. This is equal to negative V out for this circuit. And we found what we were looking for. This is the relationship between V out and V1 when the V1 is the only active voltage in this circuit. If you have rest of the voltages active, you can also do this thing separately for each of them. And then at the end, because this is a linear circuit, superposition applies. And from superposition, we can just add up. So superposition in a linear circuit is valid. A linear circuit like this one. OK, so then it indicates that this is going to be applied also for V2, V3, except that it would be V2 and 1 over R2. So at the end, we'll see that V out is equal to 1 over C that is common for everybody, integral 
uh, V1 as a function of time, of course, divide by R1 plus V2 as a function of time, of course, uh, R2 and up to Vn divide by Rn and then dt. So you can see we found that uh, this circuit is acting like uh, the integrate, integrator that we wanted. Uh, so it is proven now. Let's just uh, move this a little bit so that there is enough space for the uh, rest of computation that I want to do. Okay. There you go. And I'm going to box this because this is the important outcome that we were looking for. So this is the integral of the linear combination of a bunch of input independent voltage sources that we applied in this circuit. Now, for of course, you could do this using the S domain analysis rather than this simple time domain analysis. I'm going to do that S domain analysis for the second circuit. Uh, so it would be as if we are using both methods to compare what's going on. So for the second circuit, you can see uh, the impedance of capacitor, of course, is um, so the Z of C2, let's say, the impedance of cap in S domain analysis is 1 over C2S. So it's simple impedance in S domain. Therefore, the voltage, positive voltage here, V positive, let me put it this way. Let me put it V positive. And the voltage at the negative terminal, V negative, again, assuming that the, this, this op amp is properly biased, so the positive supply voltage and the negative supply voltage are properly connected so that the op amp is operating in linear region, is not saturated, and it's ideal. Therefore, input impedance uh, for op amp is infinite, no current flows through the op amp basically. And in that case, you can see that this op amp in this negative feedback loop is going to um, support and uh, uh, have the virtual short in place. So, as the other circuit, V plus is equal to V minus equal to Z, equal to whatever it is, not zero. So, just the fact that they are equal. That's the virtual short. So I'm going to use this actually here um, for V positive. I'm going to write it this way. So let me go back to blue color. So for V positive, I can write, as you can see, the current that goes through, the current that goes through R2 can't go through the input impedance, input uh, positive terminal of R because that, that, that has infinite impedance. That current has to just continue flowing through C2. Effectively, R2 and C2 are in series. So therefore, uh, the value of voltage for positive terminal is, simple, is, is a simple voltage division between uh, R2 and C2. In that case, it will be impedance of cap, that is 1 over C2S, divided by series of R2 and impedance of cap times V2S. Okay, in this case, of course, you can just uh, simplify it and it becomes 1 over 1 plus R2 C2S times V2. V2 is a function of S, of course, here. Okay, so that's great. I, I found that V plus in S domain looks like this. Now, this should be equal to V minus. For V minus, again, uh, in this case, make the assumption that uh, V1 is not there. So set V1 equal to zero. We are doing V2 analysis right now. Or uh, you can, it, it depends, it's not difficult. But for, for the time being, let's make, let's go, go with superposition again. So we are trying to find impact of V2 on V out. So make V1 zero. In that case, uh, because we are setting that to zero here, you get zero. And then what happens is, there is a current that, let's say, flows this way from V out toward ground. And because nothing can go through the input, the negative input terminal of op amp, that can keep flowing from C1 through R1. C1 and R1 effectively are in series. For uh, the negative input terminal, I can write, it's a voltage division from V out across C1 and R1. It is simply R1 divided by R1 in series with 1 over C1s. So times V out. 
as a, of course as a function of SC, S domain. So if you just do a little bit further simplification, become R1C1S, divide by 1 plus R1C1S times V out. Great. What's the benefit of this? Well, uh, this is equation number two. This is equation number three. And uh, by combining one, two, three, setting V plus equal to V minus, we find a relationship between V2 and V out. So I'm going to use one, two, and three. And as a result, I get that, uh, let me change the color so that it is clear what I'm writing. I get that this should be equal to this. And when we set these guys equal to each other, just shuffling things up around, you get V out um, equal to as simple as this. V out equal to 1 over 1 plus R2 C2 S times um, 1 plus 1 over R1 C1 S times input V2. That's the, that's the important uh, formula I wanted to find that defines the relationship between V out and V2 uh, in S domain analysis. Now, keep that in mind. Specifically, of course, if, if uh, we have, if we have R1C1 equal to R2C2 equal to simply RC. So let's say you set the R1 equal to R2 equal to R, and you set the C1 equal to C2 equal to C. Then in that case, uh, what you get is much more simplified, because in that case, if that is the, with, with that in mind, V out becomes simply uh, 1 over RCS, 1 over RCS times V2, which means a simple ideal integrator with a gain of 1 over RC, because 1 over S means integrator. This, these two are the most important outcome with respect to V2. Now, if you do the other way, meaning that if now this time, uh, as a part of superposition, what you need to do, I am going to uh, remove what I set about V2, so about V1, set V1 active, now this time shut down V2 because we want to see the impact of V1 to the output. If you shut down V2 by just uh, shorting it to ground and uh, let V1 to be active now, so what happens is now what happens is um, because V2 is zero, there is nothing going to R2 and C2. Basically, V positive terminal becomes zero. So V positive, so I'm going to write it here. And to separate the two problems from each other, just let me do it this way. So I'm going to, well, let me just uh, do it better. So I am going to separate this part. Okay. There you go. So in continuation, what I'm now doing is uh, set, set V2 to zero in, in the difference integrator. And uh, in that case, V1 active, as a result, V positive at positive terminal becomes zero. There is nothing going on there. As a result, because we said uh, from equation one here, equation one, you can see that therefore V negative terminal is also set to zero. So it becomes as simple as just uh, similar to what we analyzed uh, for the top circuit. The relationship between input and output is clearly defined. So a current uh, I1 flows through R1 and then goes to C1 in series, go to V out. In that case, is uh, as simple as what you saw before. In that case, uh, we know that uh, V out is a simple uh, 1 over RC S uh, with a gain of negative 1, of course. Negative, neg gain of negative is, is what you saw before showing up. So in that case, is minus 1 over RC, S, 
d1 um, and of course not function of time so be careful we are in s domain so this is wrong i need to just uh, be very careful that we are dealing with s domain analysis so v1s okay um, and this is obviously i mean the fact that just for the sake of reminder if you don't uh, follow what was discussed for the summing, summing integral to arrive at this, just look at what we have here. When you shut down V2, the circuit becomes as simple as V1, a resistor, and a cap that has 1 over C1S, that has uh, 1 over C1S impedance. And then this is the scenario. You have op amp minus plus, and then plus is connected to ground effectively because V2 is zero, and then V out. In this circuit, it's a simple inverting uh, amplifier circuit. Uh, the gain or V out as a, uh, over V1 is simply minus one over Cs divided by R. So minus one over Cs divided by R, which will exactly give you what I have written here. Okay, we are almost done. Uh, so you can see that V1 is mapped to V out uh, with a gain of 1 over R mi minus 1 over C, and of course S means integrator. For V2, we got this one. So now you can clearly see that if you use superposition when both V1 and V2 is active, you get V out S equal to uh, 1 over RCS times V2 minus V1. Again, both of them as functions of S because we are doing S domain analysis. And uh, we are done. This is the outcome that we wanted to find. But if you want uh, further, if you want further uh, extension to time domain beyond this formula, you just uh, need to observe that 1 over S in S domain is uh, equivalent to ideal integrator in time domain. So V out as a function of time. Now it means 1 over RC, the gain, integral, that's 1 over S impact. And then V2 as a function of time, minus, minus V1 as a function of time. And then DT. This is exactly what initially said, we said here at the beginning of the problem, that this circuit going to act like. And you can see it is like that. So this is the final outcome in terms of uh, what this circuit is doing, which is the integration of the difference between the two the difference of the two input voltages with some gain, which is one over RC. I hope that you find that you found this uh, example and comparison of these two circuits helpful.